comfy UI workflows can quickly become hard to oversee. And lately I have been working on a set of workflows that are neat and tidy and that cover the vast majority of my needs. And in this video and the coming ones, I would like to share these workflows with you. The first in this series is my default workflow. It has only these three parts as its, as its base. Uh, here in the first node, we can in the drop down select the image size and that drop down is a JSON file which we can change or edit ourselves to get the uh, ratios that we use most. Then there is this prompt styler node. Um, that has the positive and negative prompt and then the big benefit of this styler is that you can very quickly select one of the styles from a list and that list can again be edited via a JSON file so you can add your own styles to it. The texts that are hidden in those JSON file styles are behind the scenes um, added to the positive and negative prompt. Then in the second block there is a file name which is a simple text note and what I uh, do is I type a text over there and via these connections that, that text is becoming the file name of all the images that are going to be saved. So if I enter a text here uh, we can have a look at the file name. We will see automatically that text is the becomes the file name, and well, that's quite convenient. And the uh, next block is the next node is the pipe loader. Well, thanks to Tiny Terra nodes who created these very nice pipes, uh, pipe nodes. Um, the uh, whole benefit of this one is that it is all in one. You have your checkpoint and you select from this long list. You also have your VAE, that's not a separate node. And we even have three LORAs that we can add here inside this node. Uh, as soon as you add a LORA, let's do that, uh, and then uh, you see that you get two extra fields where you can uh, change the strength of that node. There's no need to add the LORAs here in your prompt text anymore. This very convenient loader is connected to the sampler via just one line called the pipe. And this pipe sampler, uh, again, that also is very convenient. It has uh, all the nodes that you need in one. And we have here the standard stuff that we always need to do, like define our number of steps and the CFG and the sampler name and scheduler. And then we can select if we want to preview the image or save the image. And if we uh, do that, we uh, use this file name that we define over here. That is going to be the name of these images. A new trend lately is the use of so-called Turbo checkpoints. SDXL was the first to uh, come out with one. I did not like the image quality that much, but in the meantime there are several and one of them is, uh, let's have a look over here, one of them is a Dream Shaper. So what I did is also create exactly the same workflow, but now based on a Turbo checkpoint, uh, which means that essentially you change uh, these values over here. And I have that available as a separate file. This is the default and this is the turbo. And the only difference is these settings over here and the selection of the checkpoint. It makes it easy. You don't have to uh, do a lot of work to go to turbo. And the quality of turbo is really quite nice nowadays. Uh, let's uh, render an image and see how quick that goes. Uh, this is an NVIDIA 3070 with 8 gigabytes of RAM and it finishes this image in say 14 seconds. Well, I think that is quite nice and that is mainly due uh, because of the low number of steps required. Although uh, the Turbo Dream Shaper says in its release notes, uh, please use an SDE sampler. Uh, and that is twice as slow. So actually this is 12 normal steps, but that's still fast. Uh, normally I would render no less than 24, so it's twice as fast. All right, so this 
image is 1024 pixels, which means that it is not already high quality. Of course, we also want to be able to upscale and that is foreseen in these default workflows. Let's zoom out and we will see over here the next part of the workflow, which is the upscaler. Uh, it may look complicated, but it really is not. Let's enable uh, the first part of upscaling, which is latent upscaling. Enabling or disabling is selecting via the control key. You can select multiple nodes and then press control M uh, from milk uh, to enable or disable them. So now we have uh, enabled the latent upscaler. Um, and there we have to select uh, the old version of Stable Diffusion or the XL version. And we have to select an upscale factor. Uh, it does not need uh, to be too large. Uh, that is best for higher speed to keep it small. What it does is to uh, render this latent image again. And that will add more detail and increase the size a little bit. So let's do that and see what comes out. Uh, also, this uh, takes, uh, well, maybe a little bit more than the 14 seconds, maybe 20 seconds, because the image is enlarged. Let's have a look what it did. And we have a look at the images created so far. This was the first 1000 pixel image. And this is the next uh, latent upscaler. Look, if I switch back and forth at this, uh, well, let's say this um, uh, yeah, little faded out uh, watercolor uh, that is now becoming some sort of a mountain city. Also have a look at her face. This is the standard uh, default rendering. And this is the next rendering that is a much more detailed, nicer face. And also have a look at her hands. Uh, this is a bit messy and this looks a lot better. So that second step of uh, sampling really increases the amount of detail and usually it makes your image nicer, but not always. Let's say eight out of 10 become better and a couple become worse. It's all in the eye of the beholder. After this latent upscale, we can enable the image upscale, which is this block over here. Let me press Ctrl M and uh, we have to bypass this block in the middle, which is the face detailer. We will look at that in a minute, but let's first bypass it, which means Ctrl B that is, which makes the image that comes in uh, the same as the image that comes out. And we can now have a look at the uh, upscaler. Uh, over here we can select an upscale model. There's a nice website for that. All the links that you need, by the way, are in the text, of course. Uh, so I, I will also put a link to that upscaler website there. All right, our image is done. Let's have a look. This is the image we started with. This is the image after a second sampler pass. And this is the image after upscaling and then downsizing. Uh, let's have a look at the difference. This is before upscaling. This is after upscaling and it looks a lot sharper. Before is fuzzy and after is sharp. So that uh, upscaler does a very good job. Well, the face detailer, do we need it? Well, in this case, I think the face for a charcoal or water color uh, uh, image is nice enough, but uh, we can have a look what the face detailer can do for us. Uh, with Ctrl B I enable the middle one and I also have to enable uh, the top ones and that is because the face detailer uses a couple of models. Um, let's have a go. Uh, we start it again. It's now going to do the face detailing first and then it will again upscale that new image and then we will have a look how that uh, is coming out. In the meantime, I will enable this block. That's the final block and that does nothing more than create a small 512 pixels 
ping workflow file next to my JPEG file. What did that face detailer do? Uh, this was without face detailer and this is with face detailer. Well, it is maybe a nicer face. Uh, it, it definitely has changed a little bit. Uh, the eyes, yeah, the eyes are nicer, the nose may be a little nicer, the mouth, well, it depends on what you like, but uh, indeed it did something. All right, so this is the complete workflow, three uh, blocks to create the first image, oh, and then uh, a latent upskill if you like to do that, a face detailer if you need it, otherwise just bypass it. And then an image upscale and I tend to save it as a JPEG just before the uh, minimal file size. Uh, and then create a small ping image that contains the workflow and that, well, then I have it all. Um, the workflow is in the, uh, as a download in the text. Um, but when you uh, open that up, it might happen that you miss a lot of the uh, custom nodes that you need. If you open the uh, default workflow, uh, then chances are that this is what you get to see. Well, no worries at all. The first thing to do is install the manager. There's a video about that. And the next thing to do is to uh, click on the manager and then click here on install missing custom nodes. And there you get a list of the things that you miss. Just check them all, click install and all will go fully automatic. And after that is done, uh, you will have everything you need. Mm, well, thank you for watching and uh, have a go at all the uh, uh, links in the description to get uh, this stuff on your computer. And in the next video, we will have a look at uh, another default workflow, but now with something added, like uh, for instance, ControlNet.